Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. From the book of Revelation. And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works, you are neither hot nor cold. Would that you were hot or cold. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not knowing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. Therefore I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire, that you may be rich, and white garments to clothe you and to keep the shame of your nakedness from being seen, and salve to anoint your eyes that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and chasten, so be zealous and repent. Amen. There is possibly nothing as distasteful as a lukewarm cup of coffee. Good food is usually either hot or cold. The same can be said of a bath. A tepid shower is a misuse of water. Imaginative bathing requires live steam and ice water. <laughs> what I am saying is that there is something to be admired in decisiveness, definiteness, and decision. The trout remains the prince of freshwater sport fish because he is decisive in his movements and determined in his struggle when he is caught. The walleye is too bland to be more than a good meal. Certainly on this campus, those who impress us, at least as I remember this campus, are often the decisive ones, the fighters. And we would lose much without professors who are labeled controversial. We would lose much without those who are completely dedicated to causes and ideals. In the text, it is suggested that the lukewarm and the indifferent are spit out of God's mouth. How I wish you were either hot or cold. The militant atheist is to be preferred to the bland lukewarmness of the indifferent, the not different, those who lack individuality and distinction. The question we would like to ask this morning briefly is, why is there indifference? Why are so many college students just plain blah? In the case of this congregation, it was born out of an arrogant self-sufficiency. I have everything I want in the world. I need nothing. There was no reason to be excited because there was no emptiness to be filled. One is usually indifferent to that for which he feels no need. In our case, too, indifference may be our greatest burden because we see absolutely no need of getting excited. The great ideas are presented to us as lasting options of mankind, tasting them we choose not to bite them. Admiring them, we find no reason to be passionate. Analyzing them, we do not decide yes or no. A few weeks after I had proposed marriage to my wife to be here on the Augsburg campus, I told my beloved, look, I have something to tell you, but I should tell you now because a year from now would be too late. Darling, I said, I'm a somnambulist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all right, my beloved answered. You just go to your church and I'll go to mine. <laughs> now, the story is obviously apocryphal, but the point is clear. There are some things that deserve passionate and undivided attention. I should think that your faculty here 
will not be overly worried if some of you have your troubles, your anguish struggles, your doubts about religion and the church, your sometimes great anxiety about the possible meaning or meaninglessness of human existence. The thing we would be alarmed about would be if you had no troubles, if you asked no serious questions. Perhaps we could define the function of a liberal education, the meaning of your education here, as a systematic and a creative effort in guiding you to ask meaningful and worthwhile questions. The questions which would be asked would be so important that you could not afford to be indifferent, for not to ask these questions would be the same thing as death itself. Why were you born and how will you respond to having been born, especially since you did not choose to be born, nor were you even consulted? <laughs> and here's one that gnaws at you. What is your destiny? Or even is there anything such as a destiny, at least a meaningful one? What values will you affirm? Indeed, more important even is the question, are there any values to be affirmed? Indeed, to call your education complete, you must come to grips with these ancient questions. And it is our concern here that you capture the mood of, of Pascal, who pondered the shortness of life, swallowed up in eternity, the smallness of man engulfed in the infinite immensity of spaces. He said, I am frightened and am astonished at being here rather than there, for there is no reason why here rather than there and now rather than then. But there is something more which needs to be said. Indifference may not stem out of shallowness and laziness. Your indecision, if you have it, may not be the result of having things too good. Perhaps you do not care because you are afraid that there are no answers to any of the great questions. It is, I should think, frightening to look, in, to look into the depths of existence because an incisive probe might reveal that there is indeed no answer to any question at all. It is not easy to take the risk to cry out to heaven because your darkest suspicion may be confirmed, so you fear. The prayer might be a bootless cry to a deaf heaven and the answer, the hollow sound of your own voice. The cynic would warn you good students that the luxury of your education is but a futile quest of an infant crying in the light, crying for the light, but the light never comes because the light never was. Thus there is no answer and life is really meaningless. What a cruel joke has thus been played on man. For as serious as the questions may be, they nevertheless are only questions and man is caught as Sisyphus. He should forever ask and ask and ask. Suppose, though, that in the asking there is some answering. We may discover that man was so made that he is made to ask in order that he may be answered. He at least might have some tentative answers. Gertrude Stein is reported to have sat up in bed just before she died and asked her companion, Alice, what is the answer? To which Alice responded gently, there is no answer, Gertrude. Whereupon Miss Stein cried out, uh, then what is the question? And she fell back dead. Questions have to be asked and questions demand answers, even though the answering is but a groping. To this search and this dialogue, we invite you anew this quarter. 
my colleagues and I pray God's blessings as you work again at these new tasks, that you receive gold refined in the fire to make you truly rich. Amen.